Yo, what's up screen printers? It's Corey at Floodway and I'm going to talk today about these fancy new eco frames. Now I've had mine for a little while now so I'm going to stretch one up and just give you a little bit of an update on how they've been going. Sound good? Let's do it. So I'm just going to dive right in and just start doing what I'm doing. Um, I just wanted to say, though, that this is a little bit of a continuation. It's an update, like I said, an update from uh, my last video, the first video I made about eco frames. So thank you if you've already watched that. If you haven't, then you know that's a great way to take a look at how I made this decision, like what went into making the decision to invest in these eco frames. Um, so yeah, check that out if you haven't. But long story short, is that. I was really pumped on the reduced inventory. That was a huge thing for me. These had a pretty attractive cost even before you factor in that inventory stuff. And higher tensions. Higher tensions was definitely something I was interested in after dealing with sloppy statics for a while. Um, but since that video, I've learned a couple things. Some things, you know, were unexpected, but just feedback from owning them for a little while right so the biggest surprise I think was the weight so obviously they're gonna be a little heavier I kind of saw that coming um, just based on them being beefier and having the f like the locking strips and just extra material um, at first I kind of hated it you know I picked them up and the screen racks are sketchy, they're kind of tilting all over the place and stuff because there's so much more weight on them. Um, but it didn't take long before I started seeing the benefits of the added weight. And the first one is in teardowns, like taking the ink out of the screen after the press. Shout out to my Teardowns 101 video if you haven't watched that. But when we're doing teardowns, one of the things I like about the extra weight is that it kind of holds the frame in place. We've had all sorts of little setups like magnets and just jigs, just ways to hold the screen so that you can scrape ink out of it without having to hold it with your other hand necessarily, right? So the added weight makes that a ton easier. I really like that about it. They kind of hold themselves, they hold their own, I guess. They, they're a little sturdy. Um, the other thing about the weight is that these things will sink in the dip tank. And at first, I wasn't really sure how to feel about this. Um, mostly because, well, let me touch on something that annoyed me a ton. So, sorry. So as soon as I got these frames in, um, my plan from the get-go was, well, like I said, I made a decision to get them but really my decision was to try them. Part of the decision was easy for me to try them is because the math for me to try the starter kit was actually cheaper than it was for me to continue getting uh, the static frames that I was getting, right? And so that made it a little easy, but the thing I realized right away about the sinking and whatever is that since I bought only a small amount, since I didn't invest in the whole fleet right away, I wanted to see what was going on, um, the weight kind of drove me nuts at first. One of the worst things about having a mix of static frames and eco frames is the weight difference because these sink in the dip tank and that's something I have learned to love, but let me get to it. So first, if these are sinking in the dip tank and you have a bunch of screens that um, typically float in the dip tank, it makes it really hard to have a perfect liquid or chemical level in there that's enough to you know have all the, these screens sunk while also having some of them that don't sink. It was just kind of, I hated that part. Let me just put it that way. But after getting rid of some statics, you know, after kind of narrowing down the fleet to just eco frames, I started to realize how awesome it is to be able to drop them into the dip tank. I love the weight thing. So instead of having to push it down and then put the little stick over it to wedge the floaters down, you just, can literally put it above the tank and drop it and it'll just whoop, sink on down. So that's a ton of motion waste saved. It just lets you get back to reclaim instead of playing around with the screens in the dip tank. So that is a huge reason I love, love that they sink. It just, yeah, I, I would hate to go back to a screen that floats in the dip tank. So not really a problem with the frames themselves, but it's definitely something to consider if you're thinking about switching over, that one of the biggest 
things I hated about having them in the fleet was things that really had to do with having a mix of screens in the fleet. Make sense? All right, so um, another issue was the tape, the way we tape these up. Now, I'm not, now I'm not quite at that process here yet, not at that part of the process, but when I do, I'll show you a little bit more, but I had to go through a, um, a couple variations of different tape styles to get this going, and what am I doing here? Hold on a sec, I always forget which way it's gotta go, but it definitely feels right when it is right. Anyway, I went through a couple different ways to tape these up, and I think my biggest problem was, you know, I was running the tape along this outside edge, and the tape was overlapping into the frame, and that was just causing trouble and reclaim, you know, the water's kind of bouncing back at you and stuff like that, and that is certainly no fun. So the tape method has changed a little bit, and it made a pretty big difference. So I'll show you that in just a second, but again, that's just kind of like learning curve, right? It's actually something that I might be able to say I like more about these frames is that they have um, that little layer of tape protecting the mesh where a glue frame doesn't have anything. So at least when we're sliding these, you know, it's not rubbing on the mesh. It has that little barrier of tape. I really like that aspect. Now, let me see what else we got here that I want to talk about. So, um, yeah, we're talking about the tape. Oh, the other thing is ID numbers. So, I keep a screen log of all these screens and their mesh counts, and what I like to know is mostly how many reclaims are we getting from a screen before it pops. Really helps with job costing, really helps with identifying, like, it's an easy way to check your reclaim training and whether your guys are handling screens nicely or not, right? Because we are screen printers and everyone takes care of their presses and their equipment, but I feel like screens just don't get the love that they deserve being the main piece of equipment that we're using here, right? So I think it's really important to keep track of what's going on. So with the ID number thing, when we had static frames, the way it worked before is when, when a static frame popped, we would retire the number. And then when we got new static frames, we'd have all these retired numbers that we could choose from to pick and give to the frame. But in this case now, we've got, um, well, the ID number just stays on here. You know, like every time I stretch this, I'm gonna stretch the same mesh count onto it. So that doesn't change, and this just stays as screen number 32 for its whole life. Um, and I'm just marking when we're popping them and when we're reclaiming them. And that gives us an idea of how many reclaims we can get between popping screens, right? Okay, so next up is the tension. And that's something I want to talk about because, you know, Every mesh has a recommended tension it's supposed to run at. Typically, higher is better, um, but that's not a rule. Obviously, there's an end to this spectrum. I think that the closer you get to a solid printing plate, the less leeway, the less forgiving the press is and the, and the, the surface of the shirt has to be super smooth and all these little things like that. I came from a graphics printing background, printing onto um, like stickers, like decals and stuff, flat stock. And that showed me that the flatter an item is and the smoother it is, kind of the more variables that you end up having to deal with, right? You start talking about RZ value, how smooth the emulsion is, because if the emulsion's not perfectly smooth, then the ink can kind of seep into that. And that's not really a problem on something like a shirt that isn't smooth at all, right? So kind of needs to have that given it so when the squeegee's passing over it that the mesh is making a nice little V shape and just letting that edge of that squeegee glide along the substrate instead of you know a fat round corner you want it to be nice and sharp not mellow but nice and sharp and the tighter your screen gets the harder it is to to get that peel going 
right? So there's some downsides to higher tension, but mostly upsides. The point is, I would say we wanna be hitting it closest to what the manufacturer recommends. And in my experience, when I was using static frames, they were settling a little lower than what the manufacturers were recommending. Now, tension is just one variable, and I gotta note that higher tension isn't gonna magically give better prints or anything like that. I think that consistent tension is more important than high tension for multicolored prints. Now, if you have low tension, those screens are gonna have more variables. There's more room for that image to shift around within this, within this frame, right? But at least if they're all consistent, then you know they're gonna shift kind of the same way when the same pressure's put on them and stuff like that. So consistent, consistent tension's definitely key. The thing I wanted to mention though is that when you increase tension, you gotta look at the other variables. And a big one I wanna say is, uh, well two of them, is off contact is a huge one and your emulsion thickness. So as the screen gets tighter, those mesh openings get larger and the difference, like different, what I'm trying to say is different tensions will hold different amounts of emulsion. And that is definitely a concern because the thickness of your emulsion has a ton to do with your print, right? So if you're just increasing the tension of your screens, but you're not looking at that other stuff to make sure your, your emulsion thickness is still where, it want, where you want it to be, that your exposure times and everything are still dialed in with the different emulsion thickness, then you might not see a better print. You might actually see some problems, right? The off contact thing is really important too. Like I said, if the, the screen needs, well, we need that pressure from the squeegee just enough to overcome the off contact to contact the substrate. But if we increase the tension of the screen and we don't lower the off contact, it's gonna require more tension, or sorry, more pressure to overcome that tension. And the more pressure we're putting down, just kinda the less crispy of a print we're gonna get, right? At least that's the way I understand it. For most of these inks, we want to be laying them on top of the shirt, and that seems to be true even of water-based, like, high-solid acrylic inks. You don't really want to be mashing it into the shirt. You want to be giving it just enough pressure to overcome the off-contact so that you get that nice, clean transfer of ink, and it lays behind just that little film, just that film of ink that was filling your emulsion. So, I'm almost done here. Um, so just a couple last things I want to mention while I finish the tape here is that um, last time, I don't think I mentioned in the last video about Sherlock. Sherlock is a really similar type of system. I want to say, I don't know, I can't go on record saying which or what, but I think that the Sherlock ones have been around for long. What I can say is that I've seen the Sherlock ones around for years and years, long before I had heard about these EcoFrame, these like Nortec Ryanet joints. So, the only thing, I guess the problem I have is that like any shop, I'm just um, not really a research and development shop, I'm a print shop, and so my budget for that type of stuff, for real testing, hands-on comparisons, is pretty much zero. This is a great time to say that if you want to see me doing some hands-on research and development, like comparing two products back to back, face to face, um, smash that like button. You know, that's really what helps grow this channel. And right now, like I said, the budget is absolutely zero, but if it wasn't, then I could do some of that stuff, right? But as a normal shop, not a, you know, like I said, we're a print shop, not a entertainment shop. We gotta choose, we gotta make some decisions. And so that's what that first video was about, it was how I came to land on this decision, right? But in a perfect world, I would love to just get them in here, test them, and give this kind of same feedback that I'm giving now. But anyway, that pretty much explains just why I didn't like try the Sherlock ones. The big thing for me um, is that they seemed pretty similar. You know, they seem to get your screen up to the same type of tension. They have the same inventory benefits, you know, you're restretching them, blah, blah, by yourself. I don't know. 
I couldn't really see too much difference except for the big one for me, which was uh, the distribution of them, right? So it's a little easier, I think, for me to get my hands on these eco frame panels. And I think I've heard that some other Canadian distributors are gonna be starting to carry the panels as well too, which should make it even easier over time, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm just about to cut the last strip off this, so I want to say, uh, well, yeah, that's it. Thank you for tuning in to this video, to the last videos. I really appreciate you watching. If you want to see more of this, if you want to hear me talk about lean ideas and screen printing and efficient thinking and printing and talking about waste and all that stuff, just subscribe, like, comment. Let me know what you want to see. Let me know what you want to hear. Hit me with the questions. I'll be in the comments. I'll be on Instagram. I love chatting with you all there too. So that's pretty much it, right? Thanks again for tuning in. Check out this crispy screen. All right, have a good night.